Welcome to my studio. This is a digital shot I took of my irises. I grow irises out in my garden and every year I love to uh, get a big handful of them, a bouquet, and they have always inspired me. They are lovely. I take gazillions of photos of them. I thought this one, you know, being very up close would make a good lesson today. We're going to be doing a combination. I'll be doing uh, the background in acrylics and building it up, and then I'll be finishing it off with oils. Uh, of course, we're going to dry those acrylics first. You can put oils over acrylics, but you can't put acrylics over oils. I'm working on a wood panel, and we're going to paint that wood panel with acrylic. I'm using Deep Violet, Cad Orange Hue, and Burnt Sienna. Now when something says Hue, that means that they are not using real cadmium, which is uh, better for your health. Quickly just slapping it on there and blow drying it. You can pause here if you need to make a copy of that list. I'm doing the background just very loosely. I want it to retain a lot of energy. So I'm softening edges, kind of slapping the color in there softening the edges, leaving it very loose and unfinished in the background. Now you may notice I did not pre-sketch. Uh, if you are more comfortable sketching out your focal point or sketching all this out with vine charcoal and then you know you brush off the excess, um, then by all means go ahead and do that. Keep it loose, keep it lively. I'm using a number 14 filbert on this. And um, in fact, I ended up doing the entire painting, I think, with the uh, number 14 filbert. Just laying in all the colors. I am not trying to perfectly replicate the photograph. Uh, the photograph is inspiration and I'm trying to capture the essence of that photograph. I'm not gonna drive myself crazy, trying to get every leaf in place. You know, I'm, I'm more interested in developing a good composition uh, because frankly, those stems and other flowers could be anywhere. Uh, if you don't have the photograph right beside it, you'd never know. So I'm laying in an underpainting note of the iris. Notice it has a little bit of cad yellow in it and some of the yellow green. Um, that will help it glow. I, even though I'll end up putting some you know, much warmer highlights at the end, uh, you want this juxtaposition of those glowing parts with the cool parts. And uh, now I'm laying in some of the lavenders, the cerulean blue, some ultramarine blue, and uh, balancing the, the cools with the warms. And you want that dance of, of warm and cool. I do not have black on my palette. Um, now that cerulean is a warm blue, but with all this light bouncing around, you would have some warm blues along with some of those cool blues. Now that secondary flower that I'm putting in the corner uh, later, you'll see I, I end up dampening down those colors, darkening those colors. They needed to recede more. So those are adjustments that you make along the way to give yourself a better composition. I'm trying to allow some of that background color to 
to bleed through a little bit. It adds a lot of warmth and vibrancy to the, the greens especially. Makes them look a lot more realistic. Some of the colors, um, you know, in there I'm painting negative space. That means the space behind um, the main iris uh, to give it that curly edge. Sometimes you're painting the the positive space, the actual um, subject, but other times you're going to go in and create that edge in the negative space. Now that color down in the, the corner that I'm working on I think is important. Uh, if you'll see the layout, it has kind of the whites going up at an, a diagonal. Uh, you have a little bit above the main flower uh, to the, the right, and then you have that larger one uh, down in the left corner. And all of that is balancing that white iris in the middle. If I just had the white iris and had darker colors all around it, I don't think it would feel right. It would just be this, uh, you know, huge white flower in the middle of a dark space. I don't think it would work as well. Uh, this design, and it really was like this in the photograph, but this design um, kind of it eases you into that main event in the center. Uh, without, you know, it's not overpowering in the center. That's where I'm going to put all my definition, all my detail, uh, really ramp up the contrast. Some of those details will look right in the center, uh, how it glows and that smaller detail was a little challenging with the, with the large filbert but it also made me keep the, the brush strokes um, more loose where I didn't get caught up and bogged down in so much detail and, you know, stiffen up the painting. Really trying to get the, that swirl of the leaf. So many just flowing lines in a bearded iris like this that you really just want to capture that energy of those flowing lines. And everything else kind of fades back and becomes fuzzy and less contrast. And sometimes those are things that you as an artist just have to decide uh, that, you know, it makes a better composition. I'm really happy with how this painting flows, with um, the energy in it. Now these things that I'm doing right now, these details, this is after I put it aside for a little while, which I recommend everyone do, and then I came back to finish it off. I'm very happy with it. I hope you see how uh, quickly and easily this can be done. I did this in less than two hours. Thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe for lots more free lessons.